my name is Pamela Tu, and I work in Dr. Anderson's lab. Um, my project is in collaboration with Dr. William Ackery at the University of North Texas. Our research involves the use of ionic liquids. Well, what are ionic liquids? Well, they can be defined as a class of non-molecular ionic solvents with melting points less than 100 degrees Celsius. Ionic liquids are very interesting compounds because they possess many unique physiochemical properties such as having high thermal stability and having nearly undetectable vapor pressure under ambient temperatures. Properties such as viscosity and solubility may be tuned by just changing the cation-anion combination. Okay. So we use the ionic liquid as our stationary phase and the purpose of this is to characterize many different ionic liquid stationary phases and, the, and we coat um, these open tubular capillary columns and uh, the purpose of this is to obtain a uniform deposition of a thin film on the inner wall of the capillary column. And in order to do this we need to prepare coating solutions and this is done by dissolving the ionic liquid in a volatile substance. In my case, we dissolve 0.09 grams of the ionic liquid in 20 milliliters of methylene chloride to give us a 0.45% weight by volume. And we need to cut two pieces of tubing about uh, these lengths, one's longer than the other one. And then we attach it to a syringe. So after attaching the tubing to the syringe, we want to connect it to the capillary column, and this, is, this can be done like this. So, okay. And the longer piece of tubing um, will be connected to the other end of the column. Now we can take our coating solution and put it into the syringe. <laughs> so. tap this to make sure to get rid of any air bubbles. And um, we want this to go over here. So we'll flush the coating solution through the column for a few milliliters. coating solution is being flushed through the column and now we can begin to seal the column. Uh, actually, sorry. <laughs> and placement is crucial here because you don't want to break the plastic tubing but you want to be able to seal it. So once you find a spot and you can stabilize it, then you can close it and seal it. Okay. Now that the column has been sealed, we can place it into the water bath.
to be sure that neither end of the column touches the water or the column can be destroyed. a static method of coding. So this is where the coding solution is filled into the column and then one end is sealed and the other end will be attached to the vacuum apparatus. So it's uh, connected. And then when we turn on the vacuum, uh, you can see that the solvent begins to evaporate and the front retreats back down the tubing, which leaves a coating on the wall. Now my column has finished coating and now you want to cut off from the sealed end first. remove it from the water bath. Now we can take our column and take it to the GC lab where it will be conditioned. In order to determine the quality of the column, we need to test the efficiency. However, if the efficiency is not high enough, then we need to uh, coat the column once again. We, if the efficiency is high enough, then we can use inverse GC to examine the uh, IL stationary phase by using the Abraham Salvation parameter model. Now that the column has been installed in the GC mass spec, we can use the Salvation parameter model to examine a wide range of compounds to obtain the retention data. Collected all of my data in my lab notebook, we can go to the computer lab and where the probe molecules will be subjected to the multiple linear regression analysis program. Now we can use the multiple linear regression analysis program to analyze our data and to see the correlation between the uh, solute properties and the retention data of our ionic liquid. After finishing inputting our data into the Excel file, we can use a program called Analyze It to obtain the system constants of the IL and that is used to characterize the IL stationary phase. And from this we can uh, manipulate the data to uh, obtain the retention factor and separation selectivity. And from this we can determine the effect of the cation and anion as well as any functional group substituent effects on the probe molecules. As you can see, ionic liquids are fascinating compounds, not just due to their unique physiochemical properties, but as well as their wide applicability in many areas of separation science. And I'm really excited to start my next project, which will be using ionic liquids to extract compounds from coffee. And I would like to thank Dr. Anderson and his group, and I would like to acknowledge the National Science Foundation for their tremendous support. Thank you.